arriving now for the world premiere of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. All the stars have flown in, especially this afternoon, and we've got some true Harry Potter fans just behind me. And who are you most looking forward to seeing here today? J.K. Rowling. Well, as you can see with me, I've got loads of fans of Harry Potter. It's been a huge success. J.K. Rowling, the author, will be here this afternoon, hopefully to chat to all her fans. Oh my God, I don't think I can do this. This this isn't me. I mean, did you see the guest list? What do I have to talk about with the Duchess of York? Honestly. Whatever famous people talk about when they gather, like it or not, you're one of them now. Thank you. Thank you for coming with me. What kind of man wouldn't support his fiancée? Right. I wish Mum was here. Joe, it may be their movie, but this is your night. You've earned the right to be proud. Enjoy it. Let's go. No, wait. I just need a moment, okay? That's it. Sam, nothing to it. Just watch out for old Ellen. Who? Oh. The witch who haunted our forest. She stole Goblin Gold, and they tried to punish her. So, she moved into the forest of Dean a hundred years ago. They say, if you're with friends, you're safe. But if you go into the woods alone, she places a curse on you. She writes your name backwards on the Dynamox Stone. And once she writes the last letter, you vanish forever. Well? from the ogres. If you say it right. And remember, flick and swish. Flick and swish. Flick and swish. Flick and swish. Ian Potter! Supper! Sorry. See you. But, but you can't go. We haven't even got the trolls yet. Come on. A girl in the tent's in the top. A girl in the tent's in the top. A girl in the tent's in the top. Hello. Mm. Mm, smells nice. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Where are the kids? Di's playing outside and Joanne's upstairs writing. Writing? Yes, she has decided to become a writer. <laughs> <laughs> Last week was Prime Minister. The week before that was a horsewoman. It's no worse than the others, I suppose. Don't go saying a thing like that in front of her, Pete Rowling, or so help me God. <laughs> I'm just saying, she has plenty of time to play before she has to deal with the real world. I know, but it's tough being as smart as she is. She can do whatever she sets her mind to, and I won't have you making fun of her for it. No, I bet you won't. Beyond the wild wood comes the wide world, said the rat. And that's something that doesn't matter either to you or me. I've never been there and I'm never going, nor you either, if you've got any sense at all. Don't ever refer to it again, please. Please, just a little more. Oh, I know you, Missy. You're just one more page, me, until the sun comes up. I need to know what happens next. It's your first day at your new school tomorrow and I want you rested. Good night. Good night. Good night.
strength, they passed into what seemed at first sight like a little landlord. Mrs. Morgan, you all shall have the pleasure of my company for the next nine months. Before we go any further, I must sort you out. You will complete these quietly, I might add, boss them back. You have five minutes. Haven't you ever done Faxons? Those from my old school. The Four minutes. Patricia Parkinson, ten. Sit here, dear. Karen Bittinger, ten. Behind her. Robert Walden, nine and a half here. Joanne Rowling. Rowling. What? It's Rowling. Very well, Miss Rowling. One half point. You'll sit here. The dance world. <laughs> now that everyone is where they belong, take out your books and turn to page seven. We'll refresh. Hey, love. How was school today? Do you want to read some more later? No. I have to do my homework. Well, Joe, you can do both, you know. Joanne? 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 Joanne Rowling. Yes, Mr. Nettleship. And to what competition am I subjected today? Oh. It's unfortunate you don't apply the same diligence to your studies as you do your extracurricular projects. I received a 97. What was that, Miss Rowley? I received a 97 on my last exams. I don't recall seeing any higher. Are you saying that I should allow you to waste my time teaching someone who doesn't listen? I'm saying, sir, that I was listening. Ah, then perhaps you can enlighten the class by telling us the definition of an axiom. A mathematical property that is assumed to be true without proof. And can you name the four original axioms developed by the Greek mathematician Euclid? Things which are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another. If equals are added to equals, the wholes are equal. And if equals are taken from equals, the remainders are equal. And the whole is greater than the part. Do you know what your problem is, Miss Rowling? You have the ability to succeed, but are often given to flights of fancy when you should keep your feet more grounded. Miss Timmins, would you please switch seats with Miss Rowling? All right, let's settle down. Back to work. Missed. <clears throat> Miss Rowling, a moment. Listen, I didn't choose you because you didn't know that answer. I singled you out because you weren't paying attention. I'm sorry, Professor. This class bores you. Have you ever considered a literary career, Miss Rowling? Oh, no, sir. It's just a hobby. Nothing more. Oi, SWAT! Where 
do you think you're going? Where am I going? That's kind of an existential question, isn't it? What? I'm sorry. Were the words too big for you? I'll speak more slowly. Oh. You shouldn't have done that. Battleship's coming! I didn't need your help. Of course you didn't. Give me enough time, she would have hurt her fists on your face. Uh, I'm Sean Harris. Need help getting home? I said I'm fine. Oh. Right. Races. Mum, do you think... Do you think I'm weird? Of course not. Why would you ask something like that? It's just... Nobody reads the books I read and nobody thinks the same things I think. I just... I can't help but wonder if something's wrong with me. Oh, love. Do you know what being this age is all about? It's about trying everything. Figuring out what fits you up here and discarding the rest. How long would that take? Because I really... Joe! Oh, oh, Dad! Dad, help! Help me! What's going on? I don't know! Try to call an ambulance. What's multiple, scler multiple sclerosis? It means Mummy's very sick. Hard to get her a shot. I don't think they have a shot for this. She's going to get better. Isn't she? Mum doing any better? Change of subject. Right. That's not how head girl's supposed to act. You know what being chosen head girl at YD means? Least likely to get arrested. Still, to look good on an application. You are still planning on going to university, right? Oxford. You can't seriously be thinking about applying. I already have. It's the best place in the world for a writer. Most writers tend to let people read their work. I'm your best friend and you haven't let me see rubbish. Why is that? Because I haven't written anything that's come to life yet. And until I do, I can't show anyone anything. <sighs> I'm sure Oxford will help you get past that. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I certainly can't make things any worse. Maybe you could write me into one of your stories. You're such a Weasley guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to do the honors? Yeah, shall I use for me? What took you so long? I'm going to miss you next year. Um, where are you? From Oxford? You didn't open it. 
No. Too nervous. You do it. Me? No, 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 no. Why not? Joe, what's in this envelope could change the rest of your life. It could be the start of something bigger than you ever dreamed. I can't be responsible for that. I'm too nervous. Please. Oh, what are they, daft? You're a head girl. Top of the class, nothing but straight A's. How could they not take you? Joe, they'd be lucky to have you. I guess I'm just not Oxford material. No, it's because you went to a public school. It's because we couldn't afford to but send you to... that's not fair. No, it's not. But that's the way the world works. Now it's up to you to make the best of it. Exeter's a good school, Joe. I don't even know what kind of writing program Exeter has. Well, maybe you should consider another major. But I want to be a writer. You can still write. There is nothing stopping you from writing. Yeah, just pick something more practical. Writing is what I want to do. It's all I've ever wanted to do. Your mother and I just want you to pick something you make a living at after you're done. Something like maths. I hate maths. Foreign languages. You are so good with words. What about a foreign language? Yeah, that's never a waste. In a foreign language, you can find a good job. The secretary of my work speaks Italian. She makes a proper killing. Is that how you see me, Dad? A secretary? Oh, better that than on the dole, begging for relief from the government. Besides, you'd be close by in case something happens to your mom. <gasps> what? I'll talk to her. Joe, do not make me a part of your decision, okay? You do what you have to do. Sure. Just as long as it's something practical. Oh, there are many ways to be practical, my love. Just do what your heart tells you, okay? If you want to study writing, then you study writing. Michael Ross Jones, Health Sciences. Joanne Rowling Languages. Peter Robson Mathematics. Can you get me a standard visa and supporting documentation package? Oh, sure. I'll just have them here. There. Amnesty International Research Unit, Joanne Rowling. Hi, honey. How's the dream job? Hi, Mum. It's fine. They're doing wonderful things here. Don't get me wrong. I like the job. I really do. But I'm just not sure this is where I'm supposed to be. Ah, uh, should I even ask about your writing? I can't seem to find the right story, and without the right story, I can't seem to get any motivation. When the time comes, love, the words will be there. Trust me, I have total faith in you. Thanks, Mum. <clears throat> uh, I should go. I love you. Bye. Bye. Give a moment, Joe. Absolutely, yes. Please. What is it? Joe, how many jobs have you had since university? Uh, a few. Two, four, eight. <laughs> I think you're unhappy here. And what's more, I think you know that as well. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it was a personal call. It was my mum. And I didn't mean it when I said I wasn't supposed to be working. Your heart is in the right place. But you should be doing what makes you happy. Right. Man, I can't. Not practical. Attention, due to mechanical difficulties, 
see we're up to our usual high standard of service. Something from the cart, dear. Some sweeties or lollies. Mm. What flavours do you have? Oh, we have every flavour. Lime, raspberry, strawberry, liver, spinach, tripe. Liver and tripe? Grape, dearie, grape. Oh. <laughs> you just headed out for the day? Job interview, actually. Another job interview. I bet you did wonderfully. I'm sure I did awfully. And that even now, word of my ignominious failure is making its way through the clerical pools of Greater London. Well, I'm sure it's all going to work out. Compliments of British Rail. Liver and tripe. <laughs> Our speciality. Well, thank you. There, that's better. And don't you worry, love. We'll be going again soon. <sighs> When the time comes, love, the words will be there. Trust me, I have total faith in you. We're not saying don't write, Joe. Your mother and I just want you to pick something you make a living at. You have the ability to succeed, but are often given to flights of fancy when you should keep your feet more grounded. To wizard school, Lupa. Pen. to ignite the Christmas pudding if you don't hurry up. I'm almost ready. All right. Oh, have I told you lately how very proud I am of you? What? Your permanently unemployed daughter? No. Of my daughter who doesn't know the meaning of the word quit. Well, that's because I keep getting fired before I get the chance to learn. <laughs> You're getting fired because you have your father's stubborn streak. Which I will be getting surgically removed come the new year. <laughs> I'm also lucky enough to have your endless patience, Mum. You two girls. I just want you to be happy. For you both to find that thing that completes and fulfills you. Do you know what, Mum? I think I have. Oh. Then never let it go. Because you just don't know how long you're going to have it for. 
But you need to stop talking like this. Do you understand me? You're going to be around for a very long time. You're right, dear. You're probably going to outlive me. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Mum. I love you. Oh, I love you. Come on. Ah, of course. If you could get me a grandchild, I would not complain. Yeah, well, we'll just have to check the stocking then, won't we? <laughs> Maybe Santa left a grandchild for you. Happy New Year. Uh, well, not New Year yet, but... What? What do you mean? I don't understand. What do you... so nice to me. They fed me strawberries. God, I miss her so much. I can't even breathe. I miss her so much. I just want her back. from sunny Portugal. At least sunnier than Edinburgh, ha ha. I started my new job at last and I'm finally settled in. It's an incredible thing being here. Thank God for my flatmates. They make this whole place worthwhile. Anya is from Cork, very cocky but equally sweet once you get to know her. And then there's Jill, she's sort of the mother hen. Though she's actually younger than we are, she has a way of keeping Anya in line. Honestly, Di, I don't know what they were thinking when they hired me. How am I supposed to teach English to people who don't understand the language while I don't speak theirs? I feel awful that I won't be back for Christmas this year. But between my work and day-to-day -day things, I am keeping very busy. Still, I can't help but feel that I should be doing more writing. It's been really difficult since Mum died. Anyway, I will miss you at Christmas. Give your new boyfriend a big hug for me and tell Dad that I miss him. I'll write again soon. Love you. Right. Get yourself ready. We're going out tonight. No, I'm not going out. I've got to work. Joe, oh, come on. Darling, you've got the rest of your life to work. No, come I'm on not. now. It's the time for fun. I'm not going out. I'm going to write. Is she coming? No, she's working. No, I'm writing. 
It's not good enough. How are you going to meet anyone sitting in your room? Well, who else do I have to meet when I have you two? Let's find out. That is the Dutch journalist and her duplicitous handmaid. Yes, that's them. I'd like to keep talking. But... And keep talking. For me, you can talk until the sun comes up over the Rio Duaro. Oh, wow. They're like something out of a romance novel. <laughs> um... I've been told before. <laughs> All right, you're gonna... <laughs> Only once. <laughs> I'll get a jacket of my own okay. and... Um... Yeah, all right. Can I go? Yes, okay. just... Okay. Very quiet. Okay. I'll just go get a jacket. Just make yourself at home.
you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Do you mind, hey? This is private. You can't just come into my house and read my things. I've never let anybody Joanne, read. Sorry. Joe, are you all right? I'm fine. Anya, I'm sorry. Go back to bed. Joanna. Get out. You need to go. Please, let me, let me say one thing. What? What do you want to say? I think I'm falling in love. With a grey rider. months and I didn't want to say anything but he's really wonderful well, as long as you're happy Joe. I am for the first time in a long time I am I'm seeing a guy I really like and I'm writing a lot so what more could I ask for Joe, I, I have something I need to tell you what oh god is it dad well no it's, it's not dad well, it is dad it's just not what what getting remarried. To who? Hasn't even been a year. It's Janet, his secretary. Janet's already married. Janet has children. Now she's getting divorced. He can't do that. And I'm not happy about it either. What the hell does he think he's doing? Maybe he's moving on. Look, I'll call you next week, all right? I should have more details by then. Okay, next week. Talk to you next week then. Love you. I love you too, Joe. Oh, are you done? Because the godmothers of swing are ready to party. Okay, two minutes. girls for you to go to. You've had your fun with me and now it's over. That's no, fine. It's over. No, Joe, I don't want this to be over. Yeah, well, you have a funny way of showing it. Okay, please. Joanna, please, I'm sorry. Damn it, why are you so stubborn? Oh, Josh, I thought that's what you liked about me. Oh, Joanna, you're so independent, so different from all the Portuguese women. That's what I love about you. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no idea you were so perfect. Not perfect. Faithful. I would never have done something like that. Hey, okay, Joe, wait, I never will again. Joanna, please. Joanna, I'm sorry. I don't want to lose you. Joanna, marry me. I'm so glad you're here, Di. I wouldn't miss it. I know it was short notice. Can you believe the army called him up? He has to leave this week and I'm not even going to get a honeymoon. Do you think he might be rushing it just a bit? I mean, you just met him. Die. He makes me happy. Okay. Of course. Okay. Okay. All right. John Rowling. Isso hoje era antes. Por ter declarado o seu amor e devoção um para o outro e ante a família, amigos, aceita um a outro o marido. Same. I do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, smile, you two. One, two, three. Eight weeks, me or more. 
could leave in eight weeks, okay? And guess what? I've been writing. So what's wrong? What? That was the paper, Joe. They gave my job to someone else. Oh, baby. I'm sorry. You know what? You'll get another. You will. You don't understand. They gave away my job. What am I going to do now? Uh, well, I can support us for a little No, life. that's not the way it works, Joe. The husband takes care of the wife, okay? What? Hey. I'm sorry, Joanna. Listen. I was going to tell you over dinner, but... Hey. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. Where are you going? Another mouth I can't feed. George, you did... A Dairy Queen. <laughs> oh, how precious she is. You know why I named her Jessica? After my favorite writer, Jessica Mitford. <laughs> but Georges keeps telling everyone, come here, baby. Oh. We named her after Jezebel in the Bible. He thinks that's funny. Figures. So, where is the proud father? I oh, know. George is doing much better now that his army service is done, isn't he? Joe, you don't need to make excuses for him. I'm not, not to us. Okay, both of you stop. It's fine. He's fine. We're fine. He, he needs a job, and he'll be great. Well, it's kind of hard to do when you spend your nights drinking until the sun comes up. Anya, listen, Joe, you've got to leave him. He's not good for you, and now that you have a baby... Now that I have a baby, I can't. It's better now than when she's older. Ever since you married George, he's made you miserable. What's to say it won't get worse? This. Right here. Please don't start. Oh, you stink of alcohol. Get off me, George. George, get off. Come on. Hey, well, you don't no. want me to. Hey. hey, stop it. You don't tell me no. I tell you whatever I want. I'm your wife, not one of your girlfriends. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, people talk, George. Who's talking? Huh? Who's talking? Your stupid friends, Jean, Anya? Huh? They never like me. Great. Thank you. So what if I drink and oh, you know if I had a wife who supported me? But instead, she doesn't even have time for me anymore. Oh. Andy, go! Quick, it's Andy Walker! No! Don't! George, listen to me. I can't do this anymore. I don't love you anymore. I don't want to be there anymore. Oh. I'm just tired, George. I'm tired of all of this. It's you don't love me anymore. I can't bring her up. You tell me you don't love me anymore. Tell me you don't love me anymore. You want to go? I'll take Jess and I'll go. Go. You can keep it. go. Nobody's stopping you, Joe. Go. Go now. Go, go now. 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 Get out. Please let me. I just want to get 
Está bien, está bien, está bien, está bien. Señor, abre la puerta. Está acá, Pulice. Pulice, ¿eh? ¿Qué? 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 Yo no fui nada. Él estaba loca. Él estaba loca. Yo no fui nada. ¿Qué haces? Señora, go inside and get your things. Por un momento. ¿Qué? ¿Qué es lo que tú haces? ¿Qué es lo que tú haces? Tell him what's happened. I left George. I need a place to stay until I can get home. Oh, darling, of course. Yes. First time. Yes. Oh, yes. Being on the dole is not so bad. And it gets easier after your second child. You get more relief. Rolling. Joanne. Rolling. Is that a yeah. Joanne? Rolling. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Follow me. Rolling, Joanne. Let's see. Mary. Where's your husband? Uh, I left him. Well, I suppose this is all in order. Oh, I see you're also requesting housing benefits. Yes, we need a place to live, don't we? How long have you been homeless? Oh, we're not homeless. Um, well, actually, we've been staying with my sister and her husband. Where did you live before you became homeless? I'm not homeless. Portugal. We lived in Portugal. Why'd you leave? Well, that's a very personal question, wouldn't you say? You're asking the state to support you and your child. I think that entitles us to ask a few personal questions, don't you? He was abusive. Domestic violence. Will the father be paying any support? No. Because? Because he doesn't know where we are, and I prefer to keep it that way. Right. One last question. Yes. Are you expecting any more children? Not currently, no. Very well, Mr. Rowland. Here is your payment book. Take it to the post office once a week, and you get your assistance check. Thank you. How much? Sixty-nine pounds a week. How am I supposed to provide on that? How you spend it is not our concern. It's just it's not enough to feed, clothe, raise an infant. Perhaps you should have considered that before you left the child's father. Good day, Miss Rowling. a month, not including utilities. And there's a playground half block we'll away. Good. Got my office for some paperwork. Uh, I need to contact your employer. Actually, I'm not working right now. Of course. <laughs> then your husband's employer. No, just the two of us. How do you intend to pay rent? Um, actually, I'm. Uh, 
I'm on assistance, but and I'll be looking for a job shortly. Oh, sorry, no, we don't take it. End of people, people on housing. housing benefits. Yes, I know, I know. Believe me, I know. I've looked at five places today, and they've all said the same thing. But um, I'm desperate here. I need to find a home for my daughter. I will do anything to provide a home for my daughter. And uh, it's as if being on assistance makes me less of a human being. But I'm not. I'm not a bad person. I'm a mother trying to provide for my child. And I just need someone to give me a chance. So if you let me this flat, I promise you I will never be late with my rent. I will never complain about anything. I won't even ask you to do any repairs. I'll right. be the best tenant All right. I've ever... <laughs> All right, you can have the flat. Really? Eh? <laughs> no woman who cares for her child that much can be a risk. Thank oh, you. Oh, 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 my gosh, thank you so sorry. Oh, sorry. Did you hear that? Give me off. Okay. We got home. Do you like it? This could be your new home. Look, there's a big window. Did you have fun at your auntie dies? You were very popular. Your first Christmas. When I was little, your grandmother used to make the biggest holiday feasts with meats and breads and the sweetest sweets you've ever seen. She would have loved you, little one. She would have showered you with gifts. And you'd be the most spoiled little girl in all of Edinburgh. I'm sorry I didn't have more for you. Next year we're both going to get something better, I promise you that. Some friends donated the furniture. It's not much, but it's a start. Any problems adjusting to Edinburgh, John? No, we're managing. And I think I may have gotten a job. What do you mean? Well, I went on some interviews and the prospects look really good. But you can't work. What? Well, if you get a job, you'll lose your assistance. I'm sorry. Wait a second. I don't, um... I don't understand what you mean. The terms of your aid state that if you receive more than twenty-two fifty a week in wages, then the state will deduct the equivalent amount from your benefits. Well, then I won't be able to afford to put Jess in daycare, and if I can't put her in daycare, I can't work. You could always consider some part-time secretarial work to at least supplement your income. How does the state expect me to get off assistance if I'm not allowed to get a job? I'm sorry. Those are the rules. Oh, right, of course. We're often given second-hand toys from charities and I, uh, I thought for the baby. Thank you. Have a nice afternoon. I keep thinking about dying. For the first time since Mum died. I'm glad she's not here to see what a mess I've made of my life. Joe, you haven't made a mess of things. You have a beautiful little girl. I'm unemployed. My marriage is a disaster. I can barely afford to feed my child. What do I do? Where do I go from here? What do you want to do? What makes you happy? I'm going to show you something, okay? Okay. This makes me happy. What is it? It's a book. The book. I've been writing it since before Mum died. It's notes and pages and histories and drafts of chapters that are finished. Yeah, everything I need to work on, everything I need to finish. This here is the last chapter of the book, of the last book, the seventh book. Seven? Yes, 
Well, if I ever get there. I've only worked on the first one so far. Can I read it? Yes. Oh, what have you got so far? Uh, well, we'll just start with this. Okay. Die. You have to be honest, okay? Of course. Jess, I think we'll ever see a Harry Potter display in there. Not bloody likely, eh? At last, thank you. Let's go right.
or that. You know, I think I'm just the baby food. Please. Won't be finished until I see it in bookshops. How do you plan on doing that? I suppose I'll have to get an agent. All right, let's see. Right. I need to mail these. That's my book. I wrote it. Unsolicited pile. Anything good today, Brian? Uh, is there ever? Well, take a last pass before you go. You never know what treasures may be hiding out of sight. Night. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I'm here. Oh, thank you. And where is my sweet, perfect, adorable niece? Do you have another niece I don't know about? Mm-hmm. You should be nice to me. I've got your mail. You got something from the right staff agency? Good to hear you. Oh. is one of the agencies. I sent my book to you. Philosopher's Stone by Joanne R- Rowley. Yes. This is a children's book. Yes. No. We don't represent children's books. I know. Children's books don't make any money. I know. And they're a notoriously hard sell. Especially by someone with no track record. Very good. You're learning. Read it. I don't have to read it. The title tells me everything I need to know. Read it, or I'll quit. Will you? 
Well, no, but you will lose any of the respect you've so slowly earned with me. A wise man once told me, you never know what treasure is. May be hiding out of sight. Time to be that man again, sir. Oh, a teaching job. <gasps> the best part of it is I'm going to make enough money to get Jess in daycare and get off assistant. Oh, Joe, this calls for a major blast. Yes. I think the bowling girls should get all dolled up and go out for a hot fudge Sundays. Mm. Perhaps my treat. Well, that sounds good. Mm. Oh, oh, I'll get the phone. You get the monster. <laughs> Hello? Joanne Rowling, please. Speaking? Ah, Miss Rowling. This is Christopher Little. I believe you sent me your manuscript. Yes, I did. That was my agent. He wants me to come to London to talk about the book. You have an agent? I have an agent. You have an agent? I have an agent. As your agent, I'd be responsible for finding a publisher for your book, as well as negotiating all rights on any deal related to it, from distribution to film rights. Film rights? For Harry? Don't get your hopes up. It's a standard clause in every contract. Right. Of course, I'm, just, I'm having trouble processing all of this. Joe. This is the first time you've done this, so I suggest you get yourself an attorney. It'll go a long way in making you feel safe. Right. Good. Now, there are two more points I'd like to go over. Okay. One, I want to change your name. Why? Well, because, as a rule, boys won't read books written by female authors. So I think it would be best if we go with initials, like R.L. Stein. Okay, okay. I'll try and think of something. What's your second point? Ah, a piece of business advice. Don't quit your day job. Nobody makes any money writing children's books. Oh, well. I write because I love to write, not because I want to get rich. <laughs> That's a good attitude. Yes. Now, for God's sake, eat something. You're making me feel self-conscious. <laughs> right. J. Rowling. J. Rowling. J. D. Rowling. J. R. Rowling. J. R. R. Rowling. To talk. You know, this is your fault for not giving me a middle name, Mum. Wonderful. And Joe, uh, just keep in mind these things do take time. Yes. We'll be in touch. Is that it? Hmm. It's got a nice ring to it. J.K. Rowling. Morning recess at 10.15, lunch at 12 sharp, afternoon break at 1.50, end of day at 3.15. Any questions? Uh, time off for good behavior. Humor. Very funny. This is your classroom. Oh. Gosh, any last words of advice? Try not to be afraid. They can smell fear. Humor, Miss Rowling. Ah, you'll do fine. Welcome to Leap Academy. Thank you. Okay. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Where's well, a children's book? Normally. It's not just a children's book. Bryony feels very passionately about this work, and I believe that passion to be justified. Well, I've never heard of this Rowling bloke. Who is he? Going to be a hard sell. And nevertheless. So we'll start with Doubleday and go from there. Suggestions? Shriver at Random House? Whitlet won't touch this. Don't even try. Maybe Denise at Penguin? Roger at Bantam. Monroe and Albert. Sure. Thank you. Oh. Joe, we heard back from Monroe and Albert. They passed. Okay. I'm sorry. But don't worry. We've still got lots left. And I'll let you know as soon as I hear anything. All right, good, good. Another one. Oh, you did it. You did it. Here you go.
They passed. It's an even dozen. I don't understand. How could so many places pass? Didn't they even read it? Listen, uh, Bloomsbury has just opened a children's division. Uh, why not send it along to them? The people who published the English Patient. Hmm. It's worth a try. Don't think of a test as a bad thing. Think of it as something that makes you stronger. All right. Off you go. No talking. Good luck. This is Janet Hogarth from Bloomsbury Publishing. I'd like to talk to you about a manuscript you submitted. Miss Rowling, you have a phone call in the office. Oh. Go. I'll monitor your class. Joe Rowling. Joe, it's Chris. Chris? Hi, what is it? What's wrong? We've had an offer on the book. Bloomsbury wants to publish it. Joe, are you still there? Yes. Yes. Do you need assistance? Yes. No. Uh, I have to get back to class now. <laughs> it's fine. And Joe? Yes. Congratulations. print run of the book is rather small, only 5,000 copies in total. But if it sells more than that, there will be royalties. When is it going to be in the shops? Well, first it has to go through editing and galleries. It's going to be at least a year before you see it on the shelves. Right. And then after it's published here, I'll start trying to crack the American market. But don't get your hopes up, because right. children's, children's books, books rarely, rarely make, make money. money. Yes, I know, I know. <gasps> 1,275 pounds. I don't even know what to do with all this money. Go out and buy yourself something nice. Oh, my gosh. Do you want me to hit you? I'll take his hand. You take his other hand. Do you want to hold his hand? There we go. Come on. Oh, my goodness me. J.K. Rowling? Yes. J.K. Rowling, that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.
few more minutes? Yes, that's fine, absolutely. I bought it for my son, but I find I can't put it down. Really? I've been telling everyone about this book. This Rowling is a great writer. I hope he writes another one soon. Oh, I have a feeling he might. Oh, we're about to start. Oh, I better get my seat. Oh, you should listen in. Might be fun. Nervous? I'm absolutely terrified. I've never done a reading before. No, I'm just sorry that there's not more people. Please don't be. I'm sort of delighted, really. <laughs> Ready? Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm going to be reading the first two chapters and then if anybody has any questions, hi. Uh, you can ask me at the end. All right. Chapter one, The Boy Who Lived. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number four, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved. Well, think of publishing a book like having a child show. Just because it's born doesn't mean the work is done. Uh, no, I understand, but why, why New York? Well, because the major American publishers are located in New York. And it helps to, how do you say, press the flesh. So I've met with a number of major publishers, and the response does seem to be favorable. So there's definitely interest. Today's the day we find out. Keep me posted, okay? Will do. Yes, well, I'm sorry you don't feel more strongly about it, correct? That is the current offer on the table. Yes, I do realize it's a lot of money for a children's book. I believe that Harry Potter is going to be one of those books that children keep on their bookshelves long after they've grown up. Yes, that's exactly what Valentine said. And then they outbid you. Did nine. A nine. A nine. You have eight. Oh, uh -huh. Why hasn't he called you? <laughs> Hello? Good evening, Joe. It's Chris. Hi, Chris. You're going to be getting a phone call tomorrow morning from Arthur Levine at Scholastic Books. Be nice to him. He's just bought the American publishing rights to your book. How much? Well, I don't want to alarm you, but it was for more than we expected. How much more? One hundred five thousand dollars. Oh, what? And incidentally, Joe, that is more than anyone has ever been paid for a children's book. I am. I. I, you, I have no idea what. I'm speechless. Congratulations, Joe. And don't be scared. Hey, thanks. I am. <laughs> right. Christopher. Uh, yes. Thank you so so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Joe, do you realize what this means? Your life is truly about to change. I never dreamed they would pay that much money no, for No, no, not, not the money. Your book is going to be published in America. <laughs> Children everywhere are going to read what you wrote. Mum would be so proud of you. I wish she was here. I know. America. <laughs> in America want to know, how exciting is this night for you? Yes. Oh, um, outside of the birth of my daughter and the publishing of the first book, it's definitely right up there. When will the next Harry Potter book be published? When I finish it, I suppose. Did you ever expect this level of success and fame? Not in a million years. No, never. I just wanted to be a writer. Tell me, what would you see if you looked in the mirror of Erised? 
Well, um, that's going to have to stay my secret. Thank you. into the mirror of Erised. whitewash till he had dust in his throat and eyes and splashes of whitewash all over his black 